We've got breaking news right now into our newsroom. What we understand there was a situation on Detroit's east side where a firefighter was trapped after a house fire. I want to take you live above the scene. Now you're looking at 82 West Hollywood in Detroit is right off of Woodward. It's John R. in Seven Mile area. This is what we know so far. There was a call for a house fire. Firefighters responded. And then this was a vacant home. That home collapsed. Now, just moments ago, we did learn that one firefighter was rescued. But at one point, two firefighters were stuck inside that home after the home collapsed. Early reports that they were in the basement. We're trying to confirm that. Now, we have just learned that one of those firefighters has been rescued. But this is the deal. We've got a firefighter in that house stuck. Um, this is obviously terrifying for, for the fire department because they are going inch by inch, step by step to try to remove all of that wood piece by piece to slowly get to where that firefighter is stuck. It's a tedious task and obviously heartbreaking to watch. There's a bigger situation too here. What is going on on West Hollywood Street? I can tell you, I was talking to sources today. This is the third fire on that street today. So clearly, there's a situation. There was a fire that happened on that street at 4.30 this morning. There was another fire. And talking to sources, there was a fire on Monday morning on West Hollywood Street. This hit our radar. We're concerned, of, is there some type of fire bug or some situation in that area where these homes are catching fire? And right now, the result of it, we've got a firefighter stuck. So this is the situation. We, I don't know if the chopper can zoom in uh, any closer. We're trying to communicate with them as well. But you can see there are uh, firefighters from all different engine companies trying to remove each piece to try to get to that firefighter. Sean Lay is at the scene. I know you just got there and you're gathering information, so this is breaking, Sean. Tell us what you know from the ground level. You know from the ground level. We've been able to get down here right in front of the home. I've been here for about 30 minutes. We got pushed back a little bit. That's okay, but we still can see exactly what's going on. And fire officials have been briefing me in front of the home for the last 20 minutes. I watched five firefighters walk out of that home that collapsed. They are being treated over here by EMS, water, oxygen. They seem to be okay. Some of those guys did not want to be treated, but they were. Uh, EMS made them have a seat and, and, and get, catch their breaths, soot all over their faces. Here's what's happening right now. You see all the firefighters right there, and you see the ladder truck right there. This is where the home collapsed on these firefighters. I'm told five got out. One remains inside with debris on top of them. They've been talking to him for about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe up to 40 minutes. So they know where he is, they can see him, but they've got to get in there carefully and get that debris off of him. And then what's happening is they brought in, they've got stretchers ready for any firefighter that gets hurt. Uh, EMS crews up and down the street here on Hollywood all the way to John R. However, they have called in a special crew with guys who have a stretcher that has to be carried up in there to get him on that stretcher and then carry him down. But it's all very happening right in front of us and very, very delicate situation because you can see the condition of what's left of that home. It's crumbling and falling on top of these firefighters. They were here, as you said, Karen, putting out a vacant house fire. And uh, the, one of the fire chiefs came by and said, this is what we do. We go inside and we, we put it out. This time, hazards of the job, they said, it collapsed on top of them. I can see, I counted at least four to five guys who walked out in the past 10 to 12 minutes, soot all over their faces. They looked exhausted. They were the guys who trapped. They were able to get out and walk out. But one of the firefighters, again, has debris over him, laying on top of him. They've been in contact with him. They can talk to him. They just have to carefully get to him. So fire officials are here. Firefighters are here. EMS is here. They're bringing in a new bag of equipment right now to get up to the area. Uh, where he is. I don't know if you can see from Sky 4 the exact area of the home they're working on, but this is the scene right here from we are at the street level and we're waiting for these rescuers to get in there and get this firefighter out of there and see how badly he is injured. If you come over here, Alex, a little bit, we can see the guys who are being worked on right over here. They have been out for a good, I'd say, depending on which firefighter we're looking at, the first guy came out about 20 minutes ago, then another firefighter 10 minutes ago. Now four guys are being worked on right over there. One guy who stayed with, one firefighter who stayed with the, the firefighter who was trapped, he had to get out of there. He was exhausted. He was uh, covered in soot. He uh, was having trouble catching his breath. He had to get out of there to, to get a break. And another firefighter went up there to talk to the firefighter who was trapped. So again, you can see the guys with red helmets on, yellow helmets on, 
They are waiting to see, working to see how they can delicately get over him and get that debris off of him and then get him down out of there. Karen, that's what we can see right here. We're going to monitor every movement here and I can get a little closer. I can find out how close they're getting to the firefighter to get him out of there. All I'm right. listening to you, Karen, on my phone. You can talk to me if you'd like. Okay, thanks, Sean. I'm going to update with a little bit of information that I've been able to learn from some of my sources. What I'm hearing is, and it's the same thing as you have heard, it's a slow, methodical, ca uh, very cautious process. As we've said, it's controlled chaos. They, they believe he is close to being out. He is moving all of his limbs. That is good news. So that is definitely good news. As you had mentioned, Sean, there is communication with that firefighter who is stuck inside of that home. Um, but it, but obviously this is just frightening. You don't know if you're going to move one section and another part is going to collapse. It's interesting when I was talking with one of my firefighters via text on this, you know, you train for the fires. You don't train as much as when a, a building actually collapses on you. It's not that you have that instinctual practice. So this is something that they don't do all the time. They fight fires all the time. Our firefighters here in Detroit are just unbelievable, as I said. Earlier this morning, I've got the addresses, uh, 39 West Hollywood and 40 West Hollywood. Both of those houses, just right down from that location, were on fire this morning. I'm understanding that they were fully involved. Then this fire breaks out now just this afternoon after 2 o'clock and firefighters rush to the scene. So if you are joining us, this is a situation. We're uh, on the city's east side right now. It's about John R. and Seven Mile area. If you take a look at the map right there, not too, kind of in between the Woodward and 75 corridor there. A, a pretty popular area spot in terms of where people were traveling. There was a fire reported and firefighters quickly responded. And at the time of them responding, that is when that, that building collapsed. There were more firefighters that were caught. As Sean had said, many have been brought out and many are being treated. Then it escalated, and there was two that they just simply couldn't get out. Right now, you are looking live at a rescue of one of Detroit's finest, one of our firefighters down there. From what we understand, there's communication. He's able to move his limbs. Now I just got a text that something just collapsed a little bit more. So I'm just reading this. More collapsed or shifting debris crushing him. More collapsed or shifting debris crushing him. This is just hard to watch because obviously we need to resolve this situation and be able to get that firefighter out to safety. I know, Sean, you might have a hard time hearing me. I'm going to try to toss it to you to see if you are able to hear me and if there's anything else that you can add from the from the scene. OK, we do not have Sean. That's OK. He's talking with people there on the scene in terms of exactly what went down. You're looking at a it appears a firefighter that is being transported into um, a EMS unit that will be brought for evaluation to make sure that they're OK. But we're talking about numerous firefighters that were injured during this collapse. And now a variety of engine companies throughout the city of Detroit have rushed to the city's east side to rescue one of the firefighters. As we said, we believe that that firefighter is below that, um, below in the underground part, probably n near the basement. We don't know exactly where the fire started, but we can tell you that soon after firefighters had actually gotten into that building and start fighting this, that is when the building collapsed. John R. in Seven Mile, this is a hard task. You're, you're, you're seeing your fellow firefighters being wheeled into paramed, uh, wheeled into ambulances, being taken away, making sure that they're okay. At the same time, you're frantically, but also at the same time, cautiously trying to remove pieces of lumber, pieces of wood, pieces of metal to slowly remove that so you can rescue one of your partners who had responded so bravely to this fire. From up above, I'm trying to count. We've got one, two, three, four. I mean, right there, there's more than a dozen right there on the scene. And then over to the right, you see other firefighters. And from what I understand, I'm, I've been texting with some of my firefighter buddies. You know, you've got that core scene where they're actually slowly trying to remove. But then when you remove that piece of debris, you cannot just place it down. So you sometimes move it over and somebody else will move it over so you can safely get to this individual. This is a, a race against the clock because you don't want to make a mistake where perhaps a limb or something like that could be crushed and then could cause a situation 
um, in terms of a, a limb injury or unfortunately anything in terms of breathing. That's the key. You want to keep communication. From what we understand, obviously the fire is out, so we're not dealing with that, but we are dealing with folks trying to be able to, um, trying to uh, be able to, to rescue him. You're looking now at, uh, that, that's a different ground scene. I think we've got Sean's camera there where the firefighters have congregated and gathered. You've got all different crews. He's giving me the wave, so I'm thinking you can hear me, Sean. Uh, okay, uh, yep. tell me. I got you, Karen. Thanks, tell me what, what's going on now. Yeah, so we're right in front of the house. Let's push in here. Alex is behind our camera. He can see what you're seeing from Sky 4, obviously, and what you're hearing from your sources. And what we're talking to, Chief Harris is here. Uh, Bob Distelrath is here. Uh, these are, you know, administration with fire and all the firefighters and EMS standing here waiting. And as fire, what you can see from our vantage point is what's happening up there. You see one of the firefighters up on the ladder here, ladder 18. He's watching. We, I, my vision is obscured by a, a big tree here, but you can just see everyone's staying there and watching and waiting to see what is going to happen next. I'm looking for the yellow stretcher that was brought in by a team of firefighters and prepared to go up there. Once I see if that's made its way up into the area where the firefighter is trapped, we know we're getting close to a situation where they might be able to get him on that stretcher and somehow carry him down. That would be a very difficult task, but something that has to happen here to get this firefighter out from under all that burned up debris. You know, we've been in these houses before after the fact, and there's just so much debris, nails, glass, anything you can think of. So this burned material is on top of him. They've got to get it off of him. And Karen, as you look at the house, look, it, it could just collapse, it could fall over at any second. I am going to check with sources here as I get a little closer. We are not allowed to get too terribly close, obviously. Uh, J Chief Harris is with our photographer, Sonny Shields. So I believe he's ready to give an update on the other side of the street. I'm going to try to get the attention of Bob Distelrath with the administration. And Sean, while you're there, because I know, I think you, I believe you can hear me. Just, We're going to be waiting to he's hear. He's still in there? And I believe you can hear me, Sean. Um, we are waiting for the- Still in there? Just how much material is on? I'm gonna take it over for a little bit. I think that Sean's trying to gather some information, obviously, for us. We're expecting to hear some kind of update from the chief, but at this time, as we all know, in a breaking news situation, sometimes it is very hard to give an update because this is a breaking news situation. You have to also, you know, these firefighters who are doing the rescue are putting themselves at risk, obviously. You know, they're on this structure that is not sound, that is not safe by any means, and they're trying to slowly get to the spot where that firefighter is trapped. If you're just joining us, want to give you a quick update. So this is a fire that happened this afternoon after the lunch hour. They get the call. You know, it seems like a typical uh, a typical call, uh, you know, an engine response, not multiple engines. Uh, firefighters go in the structure and soon after the fire is put out, that structure collapses. Firefighters are stuck inside. Some of them have been brought out and some of them have been treated. Then it got to a point that two were physically stuck, that one of them was rescued. Now we have one firefighter that is trapped in this structure at 82 West Hollywood near John R. and Seven Mile. There is a frantic controlled chaos is what it's being described as. At moments, they have been able to communicate to this firefighter uh, verbally. We have told that his limbs were moving, but then at another point we heard that the more debris had fallen on him or her, and I do apologize, I'm using that reference because we don't know exactly who this individual is. Um, Sean, there's so many engine companies responding to this. Are we able to learn anything more about the scene? Well, here's what's going on. Fire administration is here. I was able to walk down the street, get an update from them. So everything we're telling you from here on the ground, right in front of the house, is confirmed information. You see guys going in with big shovels. They just got back on here on uh, number 35. Got a bunch of shovels off of there. And what I'm being told by administration is firefighters are with the firefighter who's trapped. Shovels are going up to get all of that debris off of him. He's talking. He's moving his arms and legs, as you said. We're going to get that off of him. And the uh, gentleman with administration says we are going to get him on a gurney and carry him out of there. And they're getting very, very close to doing so. Part of that was bringing the big shovels up there. That gives you a good indication of small particles, big, partic big, big chunks of debris on this firefighter. They got to clear it off. 
try not to injure him while doing it, get all that off of there, somehow get him on that gurney. We don't know if he can do it himself or if he's going to have to be uh, uh, put on that stretcher and then carried down, and we should be able to see him coming down here. The uh, fire administration said we're very close. We're right there with him. We're very close. He is still in there, but we are going to get him out any moment. That is the latest right here. I'm going to keep an eye on everything. Everyone's calm and cool here doing their jobs, as you might expect. And Karen, the firefighters who were trapped that came out. One guy got a bottle of water, sat down on a gurney. He was shaking his head. Another guy was checked out while he was standing. He did not want to get on a gurney with EMS. He said, I'm fine. They said, no way. You're sitting down. You're taking some oxygen. You're drinking some water. Those guys have been removed. They're going to go to the hospital to get checked out. The guys I saw who were able to get out themselves seemed to be okay, but exhausted, covered in soot. And now we've got the one firefighter up there covered in debris, and they are very close to getting him out. I'm keeping an eye on two stretchers here that you can't see. They're right there where the firefighters are standing. When we see them going up there, we know they're getting very close to getting him on one of those and getting him out of there. So let's keep an eye here from above Sky 4, Alex Atwell's camera here on the ground on Hollywood, and we'll see what the result is going to be. They are confident they're going to get him out of there and get him to safety and, of course, get him the care that he's going to need. And, you know, Sean, you bring up a really important point in a rescue like this. I mean, we do have to address the needs of the people who are trying to rescue the individual. You know, they've already been, many of them, in a fire already, so they've already fought that. Earlier today, there have been two, uh, uh, three, wait, no, one, two, two other fires there on that street. They've already battled that, and now they're de dealing with heat exhaustion. So they do have a methodical way in terms of working on this rescue. They're going to have individuals trying, hey, and, and then they rotate the crews. Yes, yes Sean. Let me, let me jump in. Here's another challenge they got here. They got low water pressure uh, for water on the hoses. Let me tell you, we're standing in front of the house right here that you're looking at. If I walk down, three football fields, there's a hydrant. The hydrant has a big yellow sign on it. I took video of it. I'm going to send it in. It says out of service. The water department is at that hydrant right now. Fire department called uh, DWSD crews to come in to address low pressure and a hydrant that's out. So that's even another challenge. There's, if you can see the big pool of water here, the street we got soaked uh, is flooded in front of the house and down the street. So something's going on with uh, is there a water main that's broken and the, the, the water isn't getting through the hoses with enough pressure and it's coming up here through the street, ponding up? Uh, there, I tell you, do you want to just do this, Alex? Let's just show, follow me this way. The house is there. The rescue is taking place right there. Real quick, there's a hose. It's underwater. If you go over here, there's a hydrant down there. It's out of order. You can see people in a high-vis vest working on it. There's a truck down there another block away. That's where a working hydrant is pumping water this way when they needed water to put this fire out before the collapse. If another fire sparks up here or if this reheats, they'll need water and they're obviously not getting the type of water they need to adequately fight fires here. Just another challenge uh, through all of this. And I'm going to add, you can see, well, I'm going to stop you for a second yeah. quick, Sean, just to give you, you a second so we can show some of this water situation. We've done investigations. I know you have as well. You know, this water main situation and having fire hydrants work is critical to safety and preventing fires and saving lives. And from what I can tell from this area, from the folks that I've been communicating, there has been an issue in terms of pressure, um, in terms of fighting fires at certain of these hydrants. And like we had said, um, you know, we had two different fires already this morning, and from what I understand, one hydrant would just simply not turn off this morning. So that is perhaps why you see some of that ponding. Obviously, that will be for later investigation and reporting, but it's ridiculous. I mean, we need fire hydrants that are working, we need the pressure, and we need them to be able to respond quickly. Now, fortunately, that fire has been able to be put out, but, you know, this is the third fire on the street. What is going on? Who is trying to track this down? And now we've got a firefighter. Can you go on with me, Chief? Risk. Um, I think Sean's just trying to flag down the chief just to try to get some information. So we see them putting out some of those hot spots. And just because you don't see flames and you don't see smoke, it doesn't mean that they're isn't a fire and there isn't a danger. There's smoldering embers there. There are firefighters that have dealt with some smoke inhalation. They're exhausted. It's hot. They need water themselves. So they're rotating, uh, you know, crews one by one. Now we've been on the air for some 15, 20 minutes and, you know, they've been doing this for quite some time. We got word that that fire broke out and then the collapse happened. And that's when all these other different engine companies now have responded. Sean's got the chief. Sean, tell us more. 
Chief James Harris, I know there's a lot going on, so thank you for your time. Just update everyone. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at here? And there's one firefighter left trapped, right? Correct. He's talking to you guys. Correct. What's going on? Uh, we have one firefighter trapped. He's conscious. Um, he's talking to us. Uh, we're in the process of getting him out, getting him transported to the hospital. Where is he exactly in the structure? Um, he's to the he's right. Up, upstairs, though, the upper no, level? Uh, Lower. First stair, first story. So what happened? Uh, we're extinguishing a fire, house fire, a vacant dwelling. Unfortunately, the house collapsed, and there's debris on top of the firefighter. Can you describe the debris? I mean, we can see here. There's bricks, glass, boards, nails. Correct. Just about anything Plaster, you think of. wood, yes. Do, do we know if he's injured right now? Uh, Under slightly, all that? but he's talking. And he's, he's moving talking, all and he's arm. moving, he's conscious. So, so he, I saw you guys go up with shovels, which indicates you got to start digging stuff off of him? Correct. It's our worst nightmare. Tell me about that. I mean, how, is there a, a foot of debris on him, two feet of debris? Uh, approximately a foot and a half. A foot and a half of debris on this firefighter. He's Correct. laying down. Correct. You guys are going to get that off of him. Yes. How, what happens after that? What happens after that, we're going to stay prayerful and hopeful that his injuries are minor. But how do you get him on a stretcher? I see a handheld stretcher uh, going up that way. Uh, you guys have to, how can they step on to the surface he's on and not know it's going to collapse into the bo we're bottom We train floor? extensively in the academy during our training. We train for these type of structures. We train for these type of collapses all the time. We saw, how many firefighters were trapped initially? Uh, there were two trapped. We transported five. Transported five. What kind of, in, what happened to those guys, the five? We saw them come out. Some didn't want to be treated. Correct. They got a, but the EMS, they said, look, you're, Correct. Getting, you're getting water, you're getting oxygen, we're taking you. Uh, how are those guys doing? Right now, they're good. Um, we'll head over to the hospital and get an update shortly. Um, it's hot out here, so heat exhaustion, smoke inhalation, they all play a factor. Absolutely. We saw one firefighter, I think it was with the firefighter who was trapped, staying with him. I think Correct. he had to come out for a little bit because he was so hot and he needed Correct. some water. But we're family. If one goes down, we all go to work. What's going on here? Was there low pressure and a, a water main break? Are you getting the water you need here yes, on this street? Yes, we are. You are. Yes. Was there a problem with that earlier? Uh, no. Uh, so if you can turn around, I saw it looks like everyone's ready to go. Yes. Do you know exactly what uh, part we're looking at right now? What, what, I know you're here with us, but are they to him? They're, they're getting ready to get him out of there? Right now we're in rescue mode. We're in total rescue mode. You had fires on this stream earlier today? Um, at this time we're under investigation. Under investigation and all yes. that. So we've got that right there. Okay, so bottom line, uh, do, you know the, do you know who the firefighter is who's trapped? At chance? this time, not now. We don't have any names at this moment. Got it. Okay, and, but he is talking to you guys. Correct. Do you know what he's saying to you guys? Uh, he's just conscious. We're talking to him, making sure he's conscious, making sure he's alert. But he knows, you're, you know, of course, you guys have been surrounding him the whole time. This has been going on at rescue for about an hour, I think, right? Yeah, about 45 minutes. Okay, you'll let us know. We'll watch to see if he comes out. Hopefully yes. he's going to be okay, but yes. this, he's going to have some injuries, I would imagine. Uh, we're hoping minor. And then you can't have any injuries getting him out of there, carrying him out. We're hoping not. We're, we're, we're optimistic. We're going to think positive. Yep. And Anything else whatever we need to know, Chief Harris? Anything uh, else? We just want the citizens of Detroit to pray for our firefighters. Our men and women laid on the line every day and put our lives on the line for them. We just ask for their prayers at this moment. We'll grab you when it's all done, Chief Harris. I think Thank thanks for coming. I know you're busy. You're okay, welcome. okay, we'll watch Thank for a positive you. outcome here. So there's Chief James Harris giving us the update here. And we're while watching Karen for this firefighter to get to you heard him say a foot and a half of debris on top of him. He's able to move and talk, but he can't get out himself. They gotta no. get the, all that off of him carefully and not get injured themselves and then get him out and not in, you know, fall or come down with him and, or another part of the building collapses on top of them. It's a I, lot going on here, extremely dangerous. Sean, it's horrific. I, like I said, I've been talking with some of my firefighters and they just literally said, you know, this is my worst fear. They do their training for fighting. Um, as the chief said, they do training and rescue, but something like this is just horrific. You've got a foot and a half of debris that is on them. I'm taking a closer look at the shot. It appears, and I don't know what you can see, Sean, because you're more on the ground and I'm looking at the chopper shot. It looks like they may be making some progress. It looks like We've got, uh, gosh, about eight to nine different people right there in the circle. And we, you think, you think the, fi no, that's not the person. I'm we've got, okay, someone just grabbed a helmet. Um, so obviously they're close to the individual. It looks like they're getting much, much closer. At one point we thought that they might need to bring in some heavy equipment to try to make the rescue, but it appears that they're getting much closer to that trapped firefighter. Um, we're gonna, tr we're trying to zoom in as much as we can with the chopper to, to to, to show you exactly the rescue. Now what they're probably doing when they took that helmet off, 
if they they're going to get oxygen to this individual because they have been trapped there. I'll tell you, the call for the fire happened at 1241. It was 134 when that mayday call came in. So we're talking about nearly being stuck there. Um, you know, the, the fire starts, then you got the mayday, and that was 134, and we're looking at the time. It's 250. That individual has been stuck there for an hour and 10, hour and 12 minutes. So right now, if they can get the helmet off and they can get oxygen to him, it, the pace is a little bit more, I don't want to use the word frantic, but it's more determined. You can see that they're, we're, we're, they're getting pieces of lumber and wood off, which, goodness, I just so hope that this goes so quickly, and I hope there's no serious injuries. Um, as the chief said, you have to make sure that you're not hurting any of the limbs, the lungs, and you need to be very careful because obviously in one moment a piece of wood and a lot of this is hot embers we're talking about. This is just from a fire. So it is a dangerous situation. Um, it looks it looks like they're making progress, Sean. Uh, I know that you were talking to the yep. chief. Did okay. I assume that he walked away? Um, do we have any other updates? I, I've got to give credit to these rescue crews. It's under hot conditions and also emotional conditions. This is one of your partners. You put your life on the line to save. Guy in the middle, red hat. I want to see, I want to see if I, you can everywhere. That's the one they're calling. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to. Alex, can you see the firefighter here on the on the street? Hey, Sean, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. I'm trying to take a close look. Right. It looks like we've got an oxygen mask on the individual right now. That is major success. He has red been helmet. stuck there. If you can see this red helmet, we believe that that's the individual that has been trapped there since that Mayday call happened at 134, and now it's 252. So vitally important to get the oxygen to the individual quickly. Because just because you get the oxygen to him doesn't mean that you're getting him removed from the debris. There was a foot and a half of debris that just fell and came crushing down and collapsed on this individual, this firefighter who was so bravely responding to a fire at a vacant house. Um, I'm just going to take a pause here. You can take a look at the video. Um, I'm just trying to do multitask here and, and look as closely as I can. It does look like we're having success, which is good. But again, this, this is very tedious. You have to go inch by inch in trying to remove all of that. The chopper's moving around in a different angle right now, just so we can see if we can see a different angle. Again, fire gets called out at 1241. That mayday call happens at 134. Firefighters have been frantically trying to save the individual from this debris. There has already been another firefighter that was rescued safely. He has been transported um, to a hospital to be checked out. There's other firefighters that have been checked out. And other firefighters, like Sean said, do not want to leave. It's one of their own. It's one of their brothers. It's one of those individuals that vowed to put their life on the line to keep all of us safe. And now they're in harm's way. We're just going to take a closer look at this video. I, if you take a real close look, it almost looks like they're, I mean, they're literally digging with their hands, trying to remove all of this. And this is heavy. It's hard to explain exactly how hard it is to move all of this, but you just had a huge home that just collapsed. They said he was on the first floor, and from what we understand, it was a, a two-story building. So you've got all the debris from there. The attic, just think about the shingles on a, on a top of a structure. I mean, just those are heavy to move. And, and they're hot. And uh, Sean, we're going to toss it to you. Um, tell us what, you, what you're hearing on the ground. Well, we're monitoring every move here, trying to see as closely as we can through a tree here that's overgrown. We can see the firefighters, but here's the deal. We talked about debris. We talked about the incredible danger here in this rescue. If you look to the upper, I, just as you were talking, and we were going through all this, Karen, I thought I saw a little bit of smoke. Now I see flames. This thing is on fire again above these guys. Hang on one second. I want to make sure my. Give me one moment here. I'm having problems with my IFB. Give me one second. I want to be able to hear you, Karen. Uh, look, the structure's on fire again okay, at the very Sean, top. I'm, I'm if hearing you look, for, it's Sean, hard I'm to hearing see, from the scene. Right? I am. I see orange flames. This is awful. At the very top, the last window on the right. We would have to get closer, and they don't want us to be any closer. But I'm looking straight through the window. It's on fire. I'm going to try to get everyone's attention, of course, is on the firefighter. I'm going to run around this black SUV, let them know that we can see fire right above them. So you don't want that coming down on everybody. Give me a second. I might be out of range here. Hey, Sean, I'm going to interrupt One real moment. quick. Sean, I'm going to interrupt. We just got an update right now. Firefighter on the scene telling us the only thing right now that is stuck is his leg. 
which is great because that means his chest and his airways are not compressed, which is vital in terms of making a rescue. So that is some good news. I'm also looking at a different angle here. We've got a couple different cameras. We see one individual, okay, he's just carrying a shirt away, but I didn't know what that was. Um, you want to look at the, if we can zoom in a little bit more, we can see a little bit more of this rescue. We see one firefighter holding the helmet, and we ob obviously believe that's the helmet of the individual that's stuck there. Um, from what we said, we, we, we believe at this point the uh, individual's leg is stuck. This is a structure that has just completely collapsed on that firefighter. Oxygen has been brought to him, which is vitally important in terms of trying to get him uh, out safely because it still is it still is a very hard task. We've got n more than a dozen people right there, and I can tell you, nobody wants to leave. <laughs> and and this is so hard. Everything that they're moving has imagine this has been on fire, and then it was doused with water. So this is just heavy, heavy material that they have to move. And when they place it down, they need to make sure that the, by putting it wherever they put it, it doesn't cause the infrastructure to fall even more on this individual. As Chief Harris said, they do train for this. But you, you got to understand, this is, they're brave and they're so strong, but it's also hard emotionally because that is one of your own. I've been texting with some of my firefighter buddies and they're, they're, they're watching this live as we're communicating and they're just, you know, this is hard. This is your worst fear. You, you know how to grab the hose and fight the fire, but it is really hard when you've got a structure that falls on top of you and you call Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. A building has collapsed. I am stuck engine companies throughout the city have responded in trying to uh, make this rescue. They've been very successful. They've been able to get many of the firefighters out. We have one left. I've been trying to find out a little bit more in terms of the individual, but at the same time, as you can imagine, the firefighting families now are very concerned to find out, okay, who is this individual? But um, right now, it's not about who the person is, it is about how the person, how that firefighter is and what injuries has been sustained. It, it's interesting as you watch, you can see that firefighter on the top of the screen right there, just like a, it's a little shovel and they're literally shoveling the debris and what has been left from this structure, slowly putting it up on the pile above them to be very careful that it doesn't fall back down. The firefighter stuck, receiving oxygen, the chief giving a crew's time to rotate and rotate. We just understand that they did send an IV, and so they, uh, the firefighter is getting fluids, which is vitally important. As we said, 134 was the May Day call. It's 258. Every single minute really is vitally important, Sean. I know you've been talking to the firefighters uh, out there on the scene, just waiting for updates. What are you hearing, and how are how is the rescue crews doing? Got one of the how. Well, you can hear me, Karen. Can you? You can't hear me from where I, I'm at. I can hear you, Sean. So make sure we're not on a range. I'll get a little close. Uh, above that, the fire is reignited, so the structure is now back on fire. They're aware of this. Everyone's focus is on the firefighter. If that corner of the house were to continue to burn and come down. It is not in the area where the firefighter is being rescued, where the rescue is taking place, but it's right above them. It's surreal to watch these guys work for so long to get this firefighter, get the debris off of him and him safely out of the structure. And the, the house, again, is back on fire in the top right corner. Sky 4 should be able to show you that. The last part of the gray house in the window, you, I, where I'm standing right here, looking at the ladder to the right of the firefighter to the top of the ladder, the structure is burning. Everyone's focus is on getting this firefighter out of there. From where I was at the front, I'm, I'm about 25 feet away from where everything is happening. If I get a little closer, I can see they're getting very close. They got the stretcher ready. They've got another firefighter being removed and taken to the hospital here. You can see me there. That could be firefighter number six because it is just such an incredibly hot time. You need water, you need oxygen. Another firefighter here on this gurney is right in front of the house where all this is taking place. He is taking a rest. There was a firefighter in the middle of the street dumping water on his head. He came out to take a break. Everyone has been so calm and so cool and just professionally working so diligently to get in there carefully, get that debris off of him. I'm hoping they're making progress with that and then getting that firefighter out of there uh, to safety and then to get checked out. I'm going to go again to get as close as I can without you guys losing the mic in range. I don't know who to come try to come with you a little bit. But 
from where I am here. Okay. I can okay. see the group of firefighters right. Yeah, go ahead. I, hey, Sean, I'm just going to add some information because we keep focusing on that helmet and obviously we see that it's red. Uh, yellow is typical for firefighters. Red is a person of rank. Um, that's what we're understanding. The update, as you had said, um, the firefighter has received oxygen, received an IV. I'm understanding blood pressure is a little low, but not alarmingly low, which completely under makes sense. You have an entire structure that collapsed on you. Um, we do understand, I just got word that three firefighters have been brought to the hospital. Um, I don't know the status of their conditions, but the good news is that they've been rescued from the structure and have been brought to the hospital. We're hoping and praying that whatever injuries that they did sustained are not life-threatening. Um, but again, the person that we're trying to focus on is the firefighter clearly in the center. Um, they just removed the helmet, which is which appeared to be red, so we're assuming it is a person of rank. They have received an IV. They're receiving an IV. They have received oxygen. We understand the part of his leg is what's really the situation. Oh, the jacket just came off. We can just see that the we believe his jacket. Again, we do not know that for sure. Someone else could have taken their jacket off, but it appears the helmet's off, the jacket's off. They're getting closer. We do have a report that Jaws of Life have uh, has arrived there, which is very important because you know you can just have a beam or something metal that's so heavy it's been on fire it's hot everything else around it has been doused in water so it's soaking wet and they're trying to slowly remove it so the jaws of life may be able to help them if they have a, a very heavy piece of material that is trapping that firefighter's leg um, and meantime the crews are rotating taking their breaks getting their sometimes needed oxygen uh, again, as we said, this is the third house fire on this street. You're looking at 82 West Hollywood near John R. and Seven Mile. We're taking the chopper look here. I'm glad if we can zoom in. Some of those tree branches are making it a little bit challenging to see to see this rescue, which has been going on since 134. 134 is when the Mayday call came in, and now it is 302. An hour and a half being trapped under rubble calling for help and seeing your fellow fe fellow firefighters rush to the scene and try to save your life. They're making success, but we're obviously concerned about that leg and what type of material is trapping that firefighter. Again, firefighter receiving oxygen, an IV, reported low blood pressure, but at this point, we're not aware of any other other injuries, but again, it's just so hard to tell. Chopper 4 moving around, Sean, right now to try to get us a better view. I'm going to toss it back to you because I know you said that the fire has rekindled in another part of the structure. We've made it to the very front of the house and we can see these guys are prepared. They, okay, I'm being told from Sky 4 that they got him out, Karen. You can see this before I can from Sky 4 right above us. We are standing in front of the house. They asked us to move to the left to give them room. Of course, we respect that, but here we are waiting for him to appear. Karen, you can probably see more from where you are, and then I can take it when we see him come out from uh, the home area. We're right on the front of the street here, right in front of the home. Okay. And we've got the firefighter up, on the stretcher. Uh, Sean, I got to interrupt you. We got the firefighter on the stretcher. I just got the text pulling out soon. We're zooming into the scene right now. We have made a rescue. I'm sorry. I'm just getting a little emotional over this. Um, okay, we've got the we've got the individual. He, the firefighter, has been rescued. He is on the stretcher right now, receiving the help that he needs so he can be quickly brought to the hospital. That structure fell on that firefighter nearly an hour and a half ago. They methodically and cautiously and carefully removed the debris. I'm just going to take a look right now so we can all take a look at this rescue. A huge thank you to those crews that have put their lives on the line to rescue this firefighter and this firefighter who put his life on the line when he got that call at 1241 that there was a house fire on West Hollywood. We've got a successful day. Now, obviously, the concern is, is, is the injuries, but we've got him out of the rubble. Sean, I don't know if folks can hear. I, I know you're on the side, so I don't, I'm okay. The firefighter has been lifted. He is on the stretcher and he is being quickly brought to the ambulance. And we had said that the firefighter was communicating during much of this rescue when that Mayday call came out nearly an hour and a half ago. Two firefighters that were really, truly, truly stuck. They rest, three firefighters have already been brought to the hospital. 
And now we've got the very last firefighter that has been rescued as teams of firefighters from different engine companies throughout the city are literally passing him from one to one to get him through. The shot is right underneath the ladder. You can't see him. And now he's being brought to another stretcher. Sean, I'm going to send it to you. We're going to keep the shot from the chopper. A successful rescue. He's out. Uh, firefighter is out. We also just heard the official confirmation also on the radio. He's out conscious. He is talking. I am walking straight over to where they are taking him straight out. You can see 45 firefighters gathered here in the middle of the street. And there he goes. They have got him. He has, has oxygen on. He is breathing oxygen. They are taking him out. He is covered in uh, just, he is covered with soot because he had all that debris on him, his skin. I could get a look at his hands. His hands are just, you know, black from soot. And I'm going to try to pick him out and run another. Here he goes, right there. He's, oh boy, man, that is a tough sight to see. Uh, they, he's, he needs to be rushed to the hospital to be checked out. He's on oxygen right now. There he goes. They're going to get him in that ambulance. They're taking him right towards John R. East here, and they have him out. They definitely, but, they wow. definitely do, Sean. I'm understanding he is conscious. He is alert. He has received the oxygen, and now they're going to be carefully getting him into the ambulance and getting him to the very closest hospital to receive the care that he needs. A, a huge thank you to the firefighters who have made that rescue. We are going to, meantime, be digging into exactly what is happening on West Hollywood. Three fires on that street this morning, fire hydrants that perhaps are not working, that can't be turned on. There are a lot of questions to be asked. We will uh, dig into this. We will continue to follow it throughout the evening. And of course, join us on Local 4 News at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. Meantime, I will tell you, this is a shot that everyone has been waiting for, We're wait for the shot of the rescue. The individual being rescued, that call at 134 for the May Day, and then now we are successfully seeing all of that work, all of that time, and all of that effort from removing the debris from that fallen house onto the firefighter. He has been rescued and he is being brought now to a hospital where three other firefighters have also been brought to the hospital. Early reports, he's conscious, he's alert, low blood pressure. He had a red helmet on, so we believe he is a someone of rank. We don't know much more about the individual, but you are looking live right now as that firefighter has been rescued from a collapsed building after responding to a house fire at a vacant building and now being put into a Detroit EMS. The lights and sirens will be blaring on the east side in a matter of moments as that ambulance rushes to the hospital to make sure that this individual is is safe and secure. They're moving just to another ambulance. We're not exactly sure why, but that's all right. We're going to make sure we, we, we ought to make sure he's in that ambulance and the ambulance is headed to the hospital before our coverage stops because it is so important just to make sure that the individual um, is on his way to the hospital. If you're in the area, it's 82 West Hollywood. We're looking near the John R and Seven Mile area where all of these fires have occurred uh, today. We've got a 40 West Hollywood, 39 West Hollywood, 82 West Hollywood, three fires in one morning, plus a fire earlier this week. What is going on in the city on that, this part of the street? We definitely need to find out. Firefighters' lives have obviously been put at risk today, putting their lives on the line to respond to a vacant fire. Firefighter in the ambulance. A huge thank you to all of the firefighters who made that rescue. It has been a long, long and exhausting afternoon. We will follow this uh, as you join us for later editions of Local 4 News.